level, your dirt floor. Part one. Hi, I'm Sarah Bergstrom and this is Book of Instruction. We've got a lot to cover today. I'm going to tell you in this video about floor flatness and in the coming video we're going to talk about floor levelness and we're going to talk about why both of these things are important. So I bet you wonder exactly what I've got going here. I'm going to build a big fire pit here in the center of this circle and it's going to be surrounded by either a flagstone or a paver patio and that is also going to be surrounded by a unit masonry retaining wall uh, to retain my, my beautiful raised bed here. So in this video I'm going to introduce the concept of floor flatness. So let's go over here and we'll look at a diagram. Floor flatness, known as FF in the industry, is the absence of lumps, bumps, hills, valleys, crests, troughs, waves, or undulations. It's also known as geometric planarity. So here you can see that this blue line represents a true flatness or geometric planarity. And then the red line represents crests and troughs that really happen in real life. So if I want to get to geometric planarity, I can whack down the crests and I can fill up the troughs until I get a perfect plane. And by perfect, I mean not anywhere close to perfect, but play along here. What we're going to do with our installation is we're actually just going to whack our crests off to meet our troughs. Whack those guys down. And so, and, and, and this is gonna be, this is gonna be an easy way uh, to get planarity. So now why does this matter? Because if we're trying, if we've got a, a sloped uh, if we've got a sloped plane here that's sloping in this direction, we want water to roll down the plane and drain away. But if, if you've got hills and, and if you've got crests and troughs, water can collect in the troughs and eventually saturate your soil below and that can cause heaving or it can cause sinking in the flat floor that you're trying to create. So now let's go back over and I'll show you how this all comes together in real life. This side of the installation you can see looks relatively, relatively flat. Uh, and this side you can tell has a great deal of undulations. It has, it has crests, it has troughs, and this is the condition um, where I had just removed the sod. So coming over here, as I put a level on this, you can see that I've got a crest here and a trough here and a crest here and a trough here. So let's diagram this. So this is a trough. This is a crest. This is a trough. This is a crest. Actually, this is a crest. This is a trough. And this is a crest. So now what I'm going to do where things get fun. I'm going to use my pickaxe and I'm basically going to use it like a golf putter to knock all of my orange crests off so that they're more even or flat with my with my yellow troughs. Let's go. Woo! Ow! This is actually 
actually kind of fun. Uh, I also recommend that you uh, make sure that your uh, dirt floor is well watered. It's way easier. Um, it does, you don't want mud, but you want to get it when it's basically been well soaked with water and kind of sat for a few hours so that it comes out nice and easily like this. And then I'll just get this side too a little bit. This side is a little bit um, higher because it, the dirt from my uh, floor here has sloughed off. And then what I do is I just rake that out with a hard rake. And then, yes, you can actually sweep your dirt floor with a broom. And you do that over the entire surface. You might have to do a couple of go rounds but this will get your floor flattened out. There's also another reason that I've made this a flat floor at this point, and we'll get into that in another video. So coming up in how to level your dirt floor part two, uh, we're gonna be learning uh, about floor levelness and how, uh, how to calculate slope and why a 2% slope for drainage is so important. Thanks for joining me on Book of Instruction. I'm Sarah Bergstrom.